listen, the overall market getting a lot of questions is on shaky ground. And some are talking six to seven rate hikes. That's what I saw on CBC. Today. Six to seven rate hikes, including a 50 basis point hike when the Fed meets next. And I'm not too sure if that's priced into the markets. I'm not sure if a 2.5% Fed funds rate in 12 months, I don't think that's factored in. 3% in the 10 year, it's basically at 2% right now. I don't think that's factored in. 225 might be factored in, maybe a little higher. 5% plus mortgage rates, not priced in. I have to tell you, those are likely scenarios right now. We have inflation going wild. Look at energy prices. Look at wages. They have to raise rates. They have no choice. But doesn't mean you have to sell every single stock. You just need to understand the macro, the macro backdrop. And it's not that easy, right? I mean, you're looking at climate change, for example. And I don't care if you believe in climate change or not. I don't care. This is about your money, right? So just, just hear me out before I get all the crazy emails, which I love, frightcurseofresearch.com. Fire away. I have thick skin and I kind of like it. Those tend to be the funniest emails. But the fact is, there is a massive initiative to curb carbon emissions by corporations, by countries, everywhere. And it's resulting in less drilling in the US. It's resulting in a massive increase in energy prices, which we're all feeling, including oil and natural gas. And it's not going to slow anytime soon. What's going to slow this trend? We have EVs? EVs ain't coming out for a while. What are you, crazy? I mean, with part supplies, they just did supply chain issues? No way. And finally, after not saying they had supply chain issues, that says, like, we do. We're not coming out with any new models this year, which is amazing. And all these other coincidences, like, I think there's 50-something new EVs supposed to hit the market. I, I When I say hit the market, I mean, like... Uh, not one or two, and hey, I got delivery, and we we'll deliver like 20 or 50. I'm talking about seeing them on the road when you're on a highway. You're two years away. You're two years away. At least. There's no way. The supply chains aren't there. The technology isn't even there. So Ford's spending $30 billion plus. Why have to spend so much on new technology? You don't have it yet? Nope. Maybe you shouldn't have just partnered with Rivian. I'll partner with Rivian, not just invested in them. But how, how do you play this with rising energy prices? Well, you can purchase oil and gas companies, done okay, service providers, get the drillers, get the producers, seismic data companies, which is kind of ironic buying them, right? Since we're supposed to make oil companies, or, you know, the climate change, you know, crazies, supposed to make them weaker, less dependent, not stronger. These companies are, are more stronger than they've ever been. But go further, go beyond that, right? Because that energy trade, wow, it's up and some missed it. Even I missed it, you know, in, in, in some of the newsletters and stuff. It, but what else is going to be impacted? Because there's another sector, which is even more ironic, is coal, right? I mean, we did everything we can to destroy the entire coal industry. Well, what's used to power electricity? Natural gas. I'm not sure if you saw prices lately, which have doubled in a year, even after the pullback, pullbacks up. The six dollars, whatever is four fifty. But look at the UK. Holy cow! Crisis, crisis, crisis levels in the UK. But forty percent electricity generation in the US comes from natural gas. That's followed by nuclear renewables, both at twenty percent, and then coal, which is at nineteen percent. Still nineteen percent. And when you look at the global electricity landscape, and hear me out really quick here. This is interesting. So natural gas accounts for twenty three percent. Of all electricity, right? Global. Renewables at 26%. Again, this is according to the IEA. Nuclear at 10%. You know what coal's at? So natural gas is at 23%. Renewables at 26 Nuclear 10 Coal's at 38%. 38%. How crazy is that? Despite China and India and Germany swearing they're significant to lower their coal usage because we must save the planet. <laughs> Guys, money trumps everything. We even learned that during COVID. Even trumps like the safety of your own children, right? They don't even care about your children with the shit and the statistics we had over a year ago that we couldn't talk about of how colds cause more deaths or the flu cause more deaths than kids with COVID in groups that are 12 years old and under. Doesn't matter. You're still seeing kids wear masks. We're learning about the effects. John Hopkins University said so everything, right? So just when you take 
COVID alone, when it comes to politics, you can see how money trumps everything. It even trumps the lives of kids just to get your agenda. Do you really think where coal prices are and where natural gas prices are, that electricity companies in China, India, Germany are going to say, oh, no, we shouldn't use coal. <laughs> are you crazy? Look where coal prices are. They're surging. You want to hear something funny? All those companies that were supposed to be put out of business, a couple of them came out of bankruptcy. Of course, they changed their name, so you probably don't even know them. I looked at some analyst coverage on them. No analysts. None of the big analysts cover them at all. I thought there was something wrong with my, my, my computer. I'm like, wait a minute. And then I put in like, you know, a, just a Dow component. And all the research came up. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you kidding? They're not even allowed to cover them. Then you go to these websites. You got to try to find their presentation and you barely can. They're not allowed to talk about their financials. They're not really allowed to talk about anything. Yeah, it's this all like buried. And I'm looking at this, start studying this. And I'm like, holy cow. I mean, not only are coal prices soaring, and they're not going to stop, right? I mean, now with the initiatives in place. But this is providing opportunity to own coal companies. Which again, yes, there's still a few around. And when I started doing research on these guys, I, I mean, they, they can't talk positively about themselves. Which is crazy. That's how hated they are. They can't even like put, like, when's the last time you saw anything positive on coal? Nobody really writes it. You're not allowed. These companies can't do it. They can't acquire other companies. But you know what? They're generating more cash flow than they have in the history of their companies. And when I'm talking about generating more cash flow, they're going to generate two of them that I looked at. They're going to generate more cash flow in the next 12 months. Hear this out, please, because I've never seen this before in my life. More cash flow in the next 12 months than what their market caps are trading at. Again, I've never seen that in my life. That's how cheap the coal companies are. But these are the types of disconnects you find in a crazy market like this. Where the climate change crazies, whose purpose is to save the planet, reduce exposure to fossil fuels, oil, gas, coal. I mean, you know, these industries are actually making these companies, the industries much, much stronger than they've ever been. Than they've ever been. I mean, they're more strong today than they were dating back a hundred years for some of them. That's how old some of these companies are. It's an oil industry. It defeated the whole purpose. But that's how you have to look at analyzing companies. How do I find the best ideas? That's how you find them. You can say, oh, well, I missed you know, oil and maybe natural gas plays. And holy cow, I never thought we'd go to 90 again. Maybe we go to 100, 120, and you feel like you missed it. You don't want to buy it up here. There's other plays that you can look at. So you're a Cursor Research Advisory subscriber. You're going to learn a lot about the coal industry tomorrow, Wednesday. It's a February issue. I'll also present you with a great opportunity. But guys, make no mistake. This is a crazy freaking market where... You have Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple have gone up in tandem for the past 12 years. Past 12 years. Look at the charts. 12 years. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, back and forth, back and forth, percentage-wise. For the past 12 years, moved up together. Yet in the past week, Facebook lost 25% of its value in a day, while Amazon gained 17% in a day. We're talking about $250 billion-plus market cap Losses and gains in a day for these stocks. And if you want to put that in perspective, just to understand how big of a move that was and how crazy and insane those moves were for those two companies, and Amazon stock has been underperforming, so okay, get it, with the 17 rise. But Facebook falling that much in a day, losing over $250 billion in market cap, there's only 24 companies in the S&P 500 that have bigger market caps than $250 billion. You would think it's more, but it's not. That's how much they lost in one day. Welcome to the new markets. We're going to see massive volatility. Interest rates are going to surge. The Fed is well behind the curve, and it's going to be ugly for a lot, a lot of companies. And it's been ugly, but it's going to get uglier. But not all companies. And you can see the difference in technology. Everyone's like, technology's getting nailed. No, well, Amazon's closing in. It's all-time high again. Of that Amazon, but Apple, then Amazon's starting to run up. You compare that to Facebook and PayPal. Wow, what a difference. Seeing separation in healthcare, even biotech now. 
A lot of those names that got destroyed, some of them are coming back, including one of those names in our CRA portfolio, which we bought at a 60% discount to where its high was, and it fell, I think, 20% now, bounced back a ton. But holy cow. Like just volatility, craziness. Oil and financials should continue to do well with inflation. Gold, what a day on Monday. Great day. And Bitcoin. And surging off its lows. I mean, you know you're going to hit the bottom at 3233 when Peter Schiff says it's going to zero again. I was waiting for that, waiting for that. Everybody is. And then boom, right back to 43, 44. Well, about 40 again. I'm poking fun. Sorry, I have to poke fun at him. See, pokes fun at everybody else. But you're looking at, at a different market with this expensive stocks, these super expensive names, companies without earnings, company weak balance sheets, you're going to have to avoid. These are names that are going to be out of favor for a while, as long as the Fed is raising rates, tightening, which could be well into next year. 